Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here today with another phone interview, this time with the British Super Middleweight Champion and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion, Mr. Lerone Richards. First things first, Lerone, how are you and how's lockdown treating you? Yeah, I'm good, bro. Um, how, are you? how are you? How are you? I'm good. Um, I'd rather be doing this in better circumstances, perhaps at a show or, you know, after your next defence of the belt, perhaps, but... Um, yeah, this is what we got to do now. What are you sort of doing in lockdown to keep yourself uh, amused? Would you say are you sort of a series watcher on Netflix, a book reader, podcast, <laughs> sort of keeping you going? Um, well, obviously you've got to say stay fit. So I've been doing my my runs, um, just ticking over um, with my little shadow boxing, just working on my technique. And um, my strength and conditioning coach Cameron Goff set out a. Um, strength plan for me um so i've just been following that really when you say to sort of keep sharpening the tools your shadow boxing and stuff how much of a downer does it actually put on your training the fact that you can't hit a bag uh, you can't hit the pads i mean i can imagine that sort of quite a lot of the yeah. training you do is actually punching so the fact that you can't do that quite frustrating yeah it's quite frustrating you know at times but at the same time like i, I always sort of look at things in a positive way and um, I'm using this time to work on my technique, um, work on drills that I, that I um, picked up with um, Ismail Salas. And, you know, I believe in, you know, practice makes improvement. So as long as I keep doing it and I keep doing it, it will just become a um, just a natural thing where I won't even need to think about doing it in a fight. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of negatives for certain boxers in this time, you know, fights not getting made, etc. And, you know, you're going to be in that boat as well with the fact that it's pushing you back a few months. But mm. I just want to pick up what you said there, actually, about the fact that you're going to be perfecting some uh, different skills using different drills. Do you reckon you could come out of this sort of a better Lerone Richards than you would have had you sort of been in camp for a fight? Well, uh, well, absolutely. I feel like every year um, I always set myself goals and the goal is always to be the be better than the previous year and um you know with this time um with this time out um it's you know it's good it's best to just keep positive and you know just keep drilling and keep working on you know the new things that you've learned and for me yeah for me definitely me working on new things that I've learned will definitely show an improvement in my next performance you say you take it year by year. So let's um, talk about 2019. That's, that was sort of the year that people began to know Lerone Richards. How mm -hmm. have things changed for you sort of uh, in that side of things, I can imagine? You get recognised more for starters? Yeah, I get recognised a lot more, especially sort of around my my area. Um, obviously, I've, my following's grown, um, which is good. And, you know, I'm grateful for that. People starting to see and, you know, appreciate what I, what I bring to the table in the sport of boxing. So, I'm, you know, I'm really happy about that and, you know, um, quite flattered, to be honest. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, my life, I've just, I've always been a guy that just keeps himself to himself, does my own thing, um, let my fist do the talking, like I always put on my post, you know, how it required. So I just do me and um, just keep myself to myself and just keep, um, just keep grinding, really, under, undercover. <laughs> I mean, I, I can vouch for that. For the fact that I remember interviewing you after um, your performance in Birmingham, it was only a quick sort of uh, post fight. I mean, there was a ton of big fights that night, so we couldn't mm -hmm. sort of talk for too long. But I mean, you just defended uh, your titles, and there was definitely names out there for you to call um, after two big performances in 2019. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really say too much name wise, you just said, Look, I feel like I'm the best super middle in the country. Take out sort of uh, the British guys who are fighting at world level now, see so Billy Joe, Callum Smiths, etc. You mm -hmm. said, look, I feel like I'm the best super middle in the country. Um, you know, what makes you think that? I know everyone's got that self-belief as a boxer. Sort of, do you think that, you know, there's an actual case for that if you're taking your bias hat off? Do you actually think, look, you are the best super middleweight in the country? I feel like, uh, you know, I've proven that now. I beat Tommy Langford, uh, former British champion, former Commonwealth champion at middleweight. Um, I beat undefeated fighter in Lennox Clark, strong, come forward fighter in his backyard. And, um, you know, I've proven that I am the best super middleweight in Great Britain. Um, obviously, excluding all the world level fighters. And it's time, I feel it's time that Lerone Richards moves on to European fringe um, world level now.
I mean, if we're talking about sort of fights and who you'd want next, one thing that I do have to mention is obviously in Birmingham, like I said, I was there and it wasn't the widest fight in the world. You know, it was a close fight. I think most people would sort of agree that you'd won the fight, but they seemed almost disgusted by the decision. Um, has there been any talks of potential rematch? Because I can imagine that's something that he's chasing, but have you just sort of put that to the back of your mind? To be honest, to be I've honest. sort of put that in the back of my mind because, you know, after watching the fight, I'm very hard on myself. And, you know, I won that fight by four rounds. And, yeah, I surrendered the last couple rounds. Well, last, yeah, last couple of rounds. And, you know, the, them rounds could have gone either way, but... You know, I don't know what Lennox Clark was watching. Um, I don't know what fight he felt he was in. But neither here or there. You know, Lennox Clark, I'm sure, um, you know, if he keeps pushing on, he keeps progressing in his career, the fight might happen in the future. But Lerone Snapper, the boss Richards, is moving on now. And that's that. I saw a tweet that Sam Jones put out um, about a week ago where he said, who do you want to see Lerone fight next? Sort of a mixture of names. I mean, some people would put Rocky Field in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, Rocky's aiming to fight uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. He's made no secret of that on his social media. Uh, yeah. Martin Murray, someone who's sort of an experienced, been around the block guy. Um, Umar Sadiq seems a sensible option for someone who's fought on BT and, of course, beaten a, an S-Jam fighter in Cody Davis. I mean, is there any of them three or perhaps anyone else that there is negotiations going on that we don't know about or that you're thinking about in the back of your head that someone that you feel you can beat? Um, well... Me, personally, I've just sort of stayed in my own lane. Um, you know, I'm the champion, you know, in Great Britain, so I'm chasing no one. Um, say, below, obviously, people who are below me, I'm, I'm chasing no one. So when it comes to, like, the British-level fighters and stuff, I'm not I'm not really watching them. If the fight comes up, it comes up. But, um, you know, in my mind, you know, I want to push on now to European level and, you know, showcase my skills there because the main goal for me is to become a world champion. Talking of sort of world level, um, Zach Parker fought Rohan Murdoch and is now mandatory for uh, the WBO title. Um, yes. Do you really think that he's sort of that step before world level? Because I saw people rumouring that you two would be a good fight. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Like, if you look at me and Zach Parker's, you know, records, right? I've won more belts than Zach Parker. The WBO European, WBO International, British and Commonwealth. Zach Parker's only won the British. The only notable name on Zach Parker's record is Daryl Williams, which people felt he never won. He never won the fight. A lot of people, um, and Luke Blackledge, mine, Tommy Langford, Lennis Clark. So you know, take what you want from that. What were your actual plans? For 2020 then? I mean, did you have something sort of mapped out? So like a three fight, four fight plan? Or was it just take fights as they come? Obviously you've been set back now, but you know, pre-lockdown and pre the whole uh, the virus outbreak. So sort of what was the Lerone Richards plan for 2020 that you'd, you'd mapped out? Yeah, well, the plan for the team was to sort of push on to, say, European fringe world level. You know, for me to get in contention for 21 to fight for a world title. And um, the plans ain't changed. Obviously, this um, virus has pushed everyone back a lot, all the fighters back. Um, but, you know, once it's all cleared up, um, we'll, um, we'll get back on schedule and um, we'll be pushing towards the same goals. Who's the European champ at Super Middle? I can't, can't seem to rack my brains. Um, I think it's Stephen Hotel, something like, from Germany. Oh, the German, right. Yeah, he went to the Olympic Games. So, you know, I know you know, about his background. But I haven't really been focusing so much on the titles, um, well, the European title. Um, I've kind of just been thinking about sort of opponents um, that's going to progress, um, well, which is going to sort of develop me into a, you know, a world-class fighter. Because at the end of the day, you know, to, to, to compete at a world level, you need to have them learning fights and um, them step-up fights. Um, to um, perfect that, I'll put down, or to put, learn and to perfect that repertoire, and then you push on to, a, you know, a world a world title. So I'm looking more at European level fighters rather than the titles. What do you make of the world scene at the moment? I mean, it's positive in the fact that you've got so many Brits on the scene. Um, 
then of course you've got the guys stateside, Jacobs, Benavides, Plant. Um, what do you sort of make of the whole the whole mix? I mean, I'd say it's a pretty strong mix and one that's full of uh, some good characters as well. Yeah, the super middleweight division is a sexy division, and you know I'm I'm very excited to be a part of it. Um, you know, all them fighters that you just mentioned, they're world class fighters. I've got a lot of respect for all of them, and you know what they're doing right now. But you know, soon enough I'll be um, in the mix with them guys for sure. I want to talk now some S Jam news. Um, they've been talking about a new signing that's been rumored. Are you in the loop of who this new signing could be? <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> can we have any clues can we play a guessing game um, nah let's not do that <laughs> get in trouble this time. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get no, in trouble I'll... you have to speak to uh, to Sam and Adam about that one I've already tried Sam don't worry um, <laughs> Joyce Dubois I can imagine that you're back in Joe Joyce and I wouldn't expect you to say anything else but can you just talk to me about how you feel that fight plays out when uh, we do see it perhaps the end of this summer um, well, you know, a lot of people sort of written, written Joe off for some reason. And if you think about what Joe's accomplished as an amateur, I know it's amateur, but let's talk about that. Um, picking up numerous amount of international medals, Olympic silver. Um, <laughs> it's, and his, um, his credentials is crazy. And, you know, as a professional, beating, you know, world-level fighters, you know, Bermain Stavern. Brian Jennings. So people need to really look into what Joe Joyce brings to the table. And, and I can assure you this, you know, when we was in camp in Vegas, Joe looked phenomenal. And um, he was definitely going to showcase um, what he was, what he's all about um, on the, was it, it was meant to be the 11th of April. But um, taking positives from it, Joe can now build on what, what he worked on with Ismail Salas in Vegas and keep building and build that repertoire down so that when he's in the ring he wouldn't even need to think before throwing them shots so I'm really excited about the fight and um, obviously I picked my mate Joe Joyce to win the fight We love a bit of hype in boxing we love knockouts we love these sort of show reels that we get and BT mm -hmm. you know I'll give him credit here been amazing with the promotion of Daniel Dubois and we've got loads mm -hmm. of good young fighters on their cards and I think or do you feel like perhaps people are sort of seeing the Daniel Dubois one punch highlight reel knockouts and you know, granted, they're not against the best opposition, but, you know, he's still hurting people and hurting them badly. Yeah, yeah. And do you think they're sort of overlooking Joyce completely and just thinking that it's just one straight right hand down the pipe and that's that's good night? <laughs> yeah, totally writing Joe off. Um, but <laughs> if anything, it's just motivated Joe even more so to, to, to prove a point and to show the world what he's, what he's capable of doing. Now, with Daniel Dubois, I've known Daniel um, and, his, and his father, um, for a long time and you know I got a lot of respect for his family um, but Daniel Dubois is not a one punch knockout well he's not a one punch that's not just his game one punch Daniel Dubois has got boxing skills and he's a very talented young fighter very talented young fighter so Joe's got um, a hard night um, hard night ahead of him but you know Joe Joyce I'm not just saying this because he's my friend um, I'm, he's got what it takes to win this fight and um, made a best man win. Yeah, definitely one we're looking forward to. And one of the many pay-per-view shows that have uh, been pushed back. Just before we wrap this up, have you got a message to send to people who are looking forward to you getting out in 2020 and uh, boxing fans who are just in general looking forward to seeing any action back in the ring? Do you know what? I'd you know like what? to thank everyone that supported me. Um, you know, supported me from day one as well. Um, believed in me. I'd like to thank my mum, my dad. Um, for supporting me throughout my whole career. Um, I would like to thank my sponsor, FCI Currency, Steve Tadros, BoxFit, um, for everything. I also want to thank my um, management team, Sam Jones, Adam Murrelly, um, for all the support, my strength and conditioning coach, um, Cameron Goff, for um, you know getting me strong <laughs> to do them 12 rounds. So uh, I really appreciate all of them. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> there's my speech. <laughs> speech done, Lerone. Thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. It's been a pleasure. And, um, yeah, like I said at the start, hopefully next time we catch up, it will be in a better circumstances. Yeah, absolutely, man. You take care of yourself. Yeah, you stay safe.